What's up, Code Reporters, and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I caught up on Love & Hip Hop, <laughs> but I did uh, just watch the episode for this week. Let me just say, the drama that's been going on between Mita and Spice is crazy to me, and the Carly Red situation as well. Well, just as a little pause, uh, like going back and finding out that Carly Red moved across the street from Ice took me the F out. How absolutely hilarious. I think this is going to be an interesting storyline for the rest of the season. But let's back up to the earlier um, scenes from this week's episode of the show, shall we? So Jessica White, who is a supermodel, she was like the Maybelline girl and everything, takes us into her health journey. So it turns out that a major reason why she hasn't been able to conceive a child to uh, initiate into Nick Cannon's um, whatever you call that cult situation is because she's got fibroids, not one, but two um, decently sized fibroids uh, sitting where her reproductive organs are and causing issues for her to be able to carry a pregnancy to term. And it was really sad just seeing her so sick, being rushed to the hospital by like her team of sisters, by the way, our sister's the best shout out to my sister. Okay. Um, so that was really heartwarming than seeing her friend come and visit her after that and whatnot. And speaking of her friend coming to visit her, by the way, I forgot her friend's name, but I'm pretty sure that I follow, like, I don't know if I follow like specifically on Instagram or social media, but I've heard the name before, but didn't recognize the face. Does somebody else use that name that I can't remember what it is? Um, so anyway, um, Jessica tells him that like, you know, she talks to him about being like how black women in general are generally ignored in hospitals. When we talk about our symptoms and whatnot, we're not taken too seriously. She's like, I have been in and out of the hospitals, like emergency rooms, my doctor's office for years complaining about pain, like in this area, it seems to be like almost endometriosis kind of uh, sort of a thing as well. And I've never been taken seriously and come to find out this whole time, I've got two giant fibroids. My medical team knows that I've been having miscarriages and they never thought to look like what the actual F U C K. And I'm with her on the anger for that. The only thing that really kind of turned me off in this situation was how she was complaining that like, this fibroid issue stopped her from being able to have kids for Nick Cannon. It's like, please leave Nick Cannon alone, girl. Like that man is so toxic. Like his situation, like, do you really think you, this is the best sort of dad you can get for your kids? Like this guy who's just like a rolling stone with kids all over the country that he doesn't really, in my opinion, even have time for. Like, no, like you should aspire for more than that, not only for yourself, but more importantly for your child, right? Like I want her to have kids and everything. I just don't want her to go running back to Nick Cannon, Sperminator Cannon. Um, so uh, good, good, good to her, good on her for like, uh, finding out finally what happened. And she's like, okay, I am not messing around with these other doctors anymore. I'm getting myself a black doctor, not just a black doctor, but a black woman doctor. And I'm like, three cheers for you. This has always been very important to me. I don't have a black woman doctor right now, unfortunately, um, because I moved, but in my other place, uh, when I was living a little bit outside of Paris in Saint-Germain-des-Prés, I had a black woman doctor um, and I was like, yes, I felt so like good. I felt so seen. I felt so safe. You know what I mean? I do love my current doctor though, even though she's not black, but I feel like she's a really good fit for me. Um, so anyway, Jessica goes and sees this doctor and um, the doctor tells her that she will be able to have kids, which is great news because this is something that Jessica really, 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 really wants in her life. And she's 38 years old. And so she's really motivated to do it like around this time in her life. The doc says, okay, we're just going to do a surgery to remove these fibroids. And guess what? About six months out from that surgery, around that time, is when you will be super duper fertile, more than normal. So it is a really good time. And so at this point, Jessica says, okay, let me start being nice. And I'm like, oh, God, I know exactly what she's talking about. She wants to start being nice to Sperminator Cannon to, you know, get him his like 20th or what is it, 40th child. I was like, girl, please. You're a supermodel. Like, what is this? You know, the ghetto. Mm -mm -mm but I digress. Anyway, let's go to Ice. Ice and Shekinah. So I still don't know what to make of this relationship between the two of them. Like last time I saw them in a full episode, Shekinah had gone to Ice's house and Ice was dragging her for not being there for her. Then they found out that there's another woman who actually was like the reason why Shekinah was not able to go to the DR to check in on 
uh, Spice, and that was this woman right here named Mita. So I guess now they've decided that, like, you know, this girl is a reason why Shekinah was not able to be there in a way that Spice wanted her to be. So now Shekinah is forgiven. And they decide to go to the Cayman Islands together for one of Spice's performances. And uh, something that was kind of creepy was that Mita called uh, via FaceTime, I think it was, to Ice to announce that she had followed them to the Cayman Islands. She's like, what? You didn't think I'd come here? I was like, girl, it's giving stalker. It's giving single black female. <laughs> <laughs> a little twist on single white female, of course, for uh, <laughs> for the record there. But uh, yeah, that was really strange to me. But listen, I love mess, so that's good. Can we get back to this guy named Chaotic? Can someone remind me what he does? Is he, is he into music or not? Like, he's very strange. He's always kind of like just there. You know what I mean? The last time I saw him, he was minding his own business, hanging on to his like food for dear life as Brandy cursed his ass out. I'm trying to find that image of it because it did always make me laugh just seeing him there with the food, but I guess I had deleted it or something like that. But this is him. And he invites Scrappy over to his apartment and he claimed that he passionately made out with a girl named Amy. Now, Amy is like a newer addition to this season of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. She does music with her sisters. Uh, she compares her family to the Kardashian family. I guess because it's a bunch of sisters all in the entertainment industry, you know what I mean? And the mom being the manager and all that, which is like Kris Jenner managing the Kardashian sisters, but bref. Uh, cha um, chaotic tells Scrappy that he passionately made out with her. The tongue, the teeth. The, the the tonsils, everything touched between the two of them. This I had to fast forward. I was like, oh, because I saw it in the preview. You know, they're like coming up. And then they show him explaining it to Scrappy. That traumatized me enough that when the scene actually came, I skipped right on through because absolutely not. And what was funny is that earlier on in the episode, Amy actually like very openly and freely talked about the kiss. She said it was off camera and that chaotic initiated it. And it was simply a peck. You know how some some of y'all be kissing your parents on the mouth, on the lips or whatever, like that. A very innocent peck. So now Chaotic, he's very like uh, exemplary of like today's men. You know how like today's men take themselves for like the prize, the women, like the princess treatment. Like he wants the princess treatment. Scrappy asks him like, is this your boo? Like what's going on now? And so Chaotic is like, no, I'm playing the field. I want to see all these women step up and treat me like the king I am. And then, and only then will I claim them. Um, but that's not it. If more than one does it. So for example, if two women decide to step up and give him the princess treatment, then he will be in a relationship with the two of them and they will be a there will be polyester, which obviously is a fabric, right? But he is joking. He is, he means polyamorous. And then uh, in a bit with the producer, the producer talks about how polyester is a fabric, is a material. And he's like, oh, like I was, I knew that. I was just saying polyester because I'm going to wear them out. I'm like, all right. Trying to be a player player from your uh, little apartment. Okay. I guess. You know what I mean? Please. Please. Uh, I can't with, with the dating world today. <laughs> So anyway, Scrappy does admit to Chaotic that, and it's not even news, right? Because he did admit in last week's episode as well uh, that he had been creeping around with Diamond, that Diamond was late on her period. That's something that his mom divulged and everything. So we knew he had been banging her behind his hoff, Bambi's back this whole time, okay? But now he's got new details. He's saying that he's been hooking up with Diamond for even longer than we suspect. In fact, Diamond had been creeping around his hotel rooms while he was doing like his little shows and whatnot and still married to Bambi and everything before she kicked him out of the house. Well, before he got his family evicted out of the house, I should say. So I don't know. He seemed proud of it, but I'm like, I don't understand why people like are proud to like to have no integrity. To me, a cheater is someone who is filthy with no integrity, especially at this grown ass age, especially when you've got children in your home and stuff and like a wife and whatnot. It's just disgusting. So the fact that he's like proud of this and he thinks it's so play up, play up. Meanwhile, he has to go move his stuff to his mama's house. It's just embarrassing for him, in my opinion, but he doesn't seem to get it. So good luck. Now, um, let's get back to the Cayman Islands, okay? Let's let's get out of the stuffy apartment and into the tropics, where it should be more bright and positive and airy, right? Wrong! <laughs> there is a face-off between Spice, 
Shekinah, and Mita when Mita finally joins them for dinner and drinks. So Spice, I do have to say, and I, I know she's got like some diehard fans and I'm sorry to those fans, but I don't really like her vibe. I don't know of her music or anything about her outside of love and hip hop, but from what I've seen, since starting the season of the show, like she just is exhausting and draining and super negative and everything constantly has to be about her. You know, when Mita comes, uh, Shekinah starts talking to her about the ways in which she wronged her by not allowing her to go to the hospital. Like she really got Mita to admit that she was trifling. Like she blocked her ability to go see Spice in the hospital and never even told Spice that she kind of was trying to see her and visit her and everything and let their friendship come crumble because of her lies. And so it was a very valid and necessary conversation to have. And guess what? Spice, who always has to be the center of attention and it always has to be doted over and cried over. She's like, oh no, stop it, you guys. This is too much drama. I don't want to see you guys fighting, blah, blah, blah. And then she turns it into her own gripes with Mita. And there she is crying, crying, crying. So I'm like, why is it okay for you to be crying over the way that, that this girl wronged you? But she kind of can't do that. She can't even get two full minutes um, talking to this girl about the ways in which she messed up her friendship with you. You know, like why does everything have to quickly center around you? You know, she's not interested in think conversations and anything that does not center around herself. And I can't with people like that, you know, the, the victim complex, the just self-centered nature of it all. It's just not my vibe at all. But listen, Shekinah and Mita seem to love it. They want to be around her so bad. So uh, they all eventually kiss and make up, especially at the end scene between Mita and Ice Spice. So I guess we'll see how that continues on, especially with Carly Red still kind of lurking around in the background uh, as the season progresses. But in the meantime, there you go, guys. Your recap for what went down. I think this was episode five of the season. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know what you thought about everything in the comment section down below. And as usual, we'll chat. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>